Job 32 through 37. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for your word before we jump in. I pray that the words resonate with our soul, that you give us an understanding that only you can give. Um, I thank you for Job's story. I'm so sorry for Job, for everything he had to go through. And although I know that you restore, it's still so painful to read and I I just sympathize and I thank you for just being there and just pray that you help us um, get grow and get closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Job's three friends refused to reply further to him because he kept insisting on his innocence. Then Elihu, son of Barakel, the Buzite, of the clan of Ram became angry. He was angry because Job refused to admit that he had sinned and that God was right in punishing him. He was also angry with Job's three friends because they had condemned God by their inability to answer Job's arguments. Elihu had waited for the others to speak because they were older than he. But when he saw that they had no further reply, he spoke out angrily. Elihu, son of Barakel, the Buzzite, said, I am young and you are old, so I held back and did not dare to tell you what I think. I thought those who are older should speak, for wisdom comes with age. Surely it is God's spirit within people the breath of the Almighty within them that makes them intelligent. But sometimes the elders are not wise. Sometimes the aged do not understand justice. So listen to me and let me express my opinion. I have waited all this time listening very carefully to your arguments, listening to you grope for words. I have listened, but not one of you has refuted Job or answered his arguments. And don't tell me he is too wise for us. Only God can conceive, con only God can convince him. If Job had been arguing with me, I would not answered with that kind of logic. You sit there baffled with no further response. Should I continue to wait now that you are silent? Must I also remain silent? No, I will say my peace. I will speak my mind. I surely will. For I am pent up and full of words and the spirit within me urges me on. I am like a wise cast without a vent. My words are ready to burst out. I must speak to find relief. So let me give my answer. I won't play favorites or try to flatter anyone. And if I tried, my creator would soon do away with me. Listen. Start that again. Listen, Job, to what I have to say. Now that I have begun to speak, let me continue. I speak with all sincerity. I speak with truth. For the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Answer me if you can. Make your case and take your stand. Look, you and I are the same before God. I, too, was formed from clay. So you don't need to be afraid of me. I am not some great person to make you nervous and afraid. You have said it in my hearing. I have heard your very words. You said, I am pure. I am innocent. I have not sinned. God is picking a quarrel with me, and he considers me to be his enemy. He puts my feet in the socks he puts my feet in the stocks and watches every move I make. In this, you are not right, and I will show you why. As you yourself has said, God is greater than any person. So why are you bringing a, a charge against him? You say he does not respond to people's complaints, 
but God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. He speaks in dreams and visions of the night when deep sleep falls on people as they lie in bed. He whispers in their ear and terrifies them with his warning. He causes them to change their minds. He keeps them from pride. He keeps them from the grave, from crossing over the river of death. Or God disciplines people with sickness and pain, with ceaseless aching in their bones. They lose their appetite and do not care for even the most delicious food. They waste away to skin and bones. They are at death's door. The angel of death waits for them. But if a special messenger from heaven is there to intercede for a person, to declare that he is upright, God will be gracious and say, set him free. Do not make him die, for I have found a ransom for his life. Then his body will become as healthy as a child's, firm and youthful again. When he prays to God, he will be accepted. And God will receive him with joy and restore him to good standing. He will declare to his friends, I sinned, but it was not worth it. God rescued me from the grave, and now my life is filled with light. Yes, God often does these things for people. He rescues them from the grave so they may live in the light and of the living. Mark this well. Job, listen to me and let me say more. But if you have anything to say, go ahead. I want to hear it, for I am anxious to see you justified. But if not, then listen to me. Keep silent and I will teach you wisdom. Then Elihu said, listen to me, you wise men. Pay attention, you who have knowledge. Just as the mouth tastes good food, the ear tests the words it hears. So let us discern for ourselves what is right. Let us learn together what is good. For Job has said, I am innocent, but God has taken away my rights. I am innocent, but they call me a liar. My suffering is incurable, even though I have not sinned. Has there ever been a man as arrogant as Job with his thirst for irreverent talk. He seeks the companionship of evil people. He spends his time with wicked men. He has even said, why waste time trying to please God? Listen to me, you who have understanding. Everyone knows that God doesn't sin. The Almighty can do no wrong. He repays people according to their deeds. He treats people according to their ways. There is no truer statement than this. God will not do wrong. The Almighty cannot twist justice. Who put the world in his care? Who has, who has set the whole world in place? If God were to take back his spirit and withdraw his breath, all life would cease and humanity would turn again to dust. Listen now and try to understand. Could God govern if he hated justice? Are you going to condemn the almighty judge? For he says to kings and nobles, you are wicked and unjust. He doesn't care how great a person may be, and he doesn't pay any more attention to the rich than to the poor. He made them all in a moment they die, at midnight they all pass away. The mighty, had, the mighty are removed without human hand. For God carefully watches the way people live. He sees everything they do. No darkness is thick enough to hide the wicked from his eyes. For it is not up to mortals to decide when to come before God in judgment. He brings the mighty to ruin without asking anyone, and he sets up others in their places. He watches what they do, and in the night he overturns them, destroying them. He openly strikes them down for their wickedness, for they turned aside from following him. They have no respect for any of his ways, so they cause the poor to cry out, catching God's attention. 
Yes, he hears the cries of the needy. When he is quiet, who can make trouble? But when he hides his face, who can find him? He prevents the godless from ruling so they cannot be a snare to the people. Why don't people say to God, I have sinned, but I will sin no more? Or I don't know what evil I have done. Tell me and I will stop at once. But God tailor his justice to your demands. But you have rejected him. The choice is yours, not mine. Go ahead. Share your wisdom with us. After all, bright people will tell me and wise people will hear me say, Job speaks without knowledge. His words lack insight. Job, you deserve the maximum penalty for your wicked way. You have... Wait a minute. Job, you deserve the maximum penalty for the wicked way you have talked. For now... You have added rebellion and blasphemy against God to your other sins. Then Elihu said, do you, do you think it is right for you to claim I am righteous before God? Yet you also ask, what's the use of living a righteous life? How will it benefit me? I will answer you and all your friends too. Look up into the sky and see the clouds high above you. If you sin, what do you accomplish against him? Even if you sin again and again, what effect will it have on him? If you are good, is this some great gift to him? What could you possibly give him? No, your sins affect only people like yourself and your good deeds affect only other people. The oppressed cry out beneath the wrongs that are done to them. They groan beneath the power of the mighty. Yet they don't ask, where is God, my creator, the one who gives songs in the night? Where is the one who makes us wiser than the animals and birds? And if they do cry out and God does not answer, it is because of their pride. But it is wrong to say God doesn't listen. To say the Almighty isn't concerned and, and it is even more false to say he doesn't see what is going on. He will bring about justice if you will only wait. But do not cry out against him because he does not respond in anger. Job, you have protested in vain. You have spoken like a fool. Elihu continued speaking. Let me go on and I will show you the truth of what I am saying, for I have not finished defending God. I will give you many instructions. Nope. I will give you many illustrations of the righteousness of my creator. I am telling you the honest truth, for I am a man of well-rounded knowledge. God is mighty. Yet he does not despise anyone. He is mighty to both power and understanding. He does not let the wicked live, but gives justice to the afflicted. His eyes never leave the innocent, but he establishes and exalts them with kings forever. If trouble comes upon them and they are enslaved and afflicted, he takes the trouble to show them the reason. He shows them their sins, for they have behaved proudly. He gets their attention and says they must turn away from evil. If they listen and obey God, then they will be blessed with prosperity throughout their lives. All their years will be pleasant. But if they refuse to listen to him, they will perish in battle and die from lack of understanding. For the godless are full of resentment. Even when he punishes them, they refuse to cry out to him for help. They die young after wasting their lives in immoral living. But by means of their suffering, he rescues those who suffer. For he gets their attention through adversity. God has led you away from danger, giving you freedom. You have prospered in a wide and pleasant valley.
but you are too obsessed with judgment on the godless. Don't worry, justice will be upheld, but watch out or you will be seduced with wealth. Don't let yourself be bribed into sin, but all your wealth and mighty efforts keep you from distress. Do not long for the cover of night, for that is when people will be destroyed. Be on guard, turn back from evil, for it was to prevent you from getting into life of evil that God sent this suffering. Look, God is all powerful. Who is a teacher like him? No one can tell him what to do. No one can say to him, you have done wrong. Instead, glorify his mighty works, singing songs of praise. Everyone has seen things. Everyone has seen these things, but only from a distance. Look, God is exalted beyond what we can understand. His years are without number. He draws up the water vapor and then distills it into rain. The rain pours down from the clouds and everyone benefits from it. Can anyone really understand the spreading of the clouds and the thunder that rolls forth from heaven? See how he spreads the lightning around him and how it lights up the depth of the sea. By his mighty acts, he governs the people, giving them food in abundance. He fills his hands with lightning bolts. He hurls each at its target. The thunder announces his presence. The storm announces his indignant anger. My heart pounds as I think of this. It leaps within me. I listen carefully to the thunder of God's voice as it rolls from his mouth. It rolls across the heavens and his lightning flashes out in every direction. Then comes the roaring of the thunder, the tremendous voice of his majesty. He does not restrain the thunder when he speaks. God's voice is glorious in the thunder. We cannot comprehend the greatness of his power. He directs the snow to fall on, on the earth and tells the rain to pour down. Everyone stops working at such a time so they can recognize his power. The wild animals hide in the rocks or in their dens. The stormy wind comes from its chamber and the driving wind brings the cold. God's breath sends the ice, freezing wide expanses of water. He loads the clouds with moisture, and then they flash with his lightning. The clouds turn around and around under his direction. They do whatever he commands throughout the earth. He causes things to happen on earth, either as a punishment or as a sign of his unfailing love. Listen, Job. Stop and consider the wonderful miracles of God. Do you know how God controls the storm and causes the lightning to flash forth from his clouds? Do you understand how he balances the clouds with wonderful perfection and skill? When you are sweltering in your clothes and the south wind dies down and everything is still, he makes the skies reflect the heat like a giant mirror. Can you do that? You think you know so much, so teach the rest of us what to say to God. We are too ignorant to make our own arguments. Should God be told what I want to speak? Can we speak when we are confused? We cannot look at the sun, for it shines brightly in the sky when the wind clears away the clouds. Golden scepters come from the mountain of God, he is clothed in dazzling splendor. We cannot imagine the power of the Almighty, yet he is so just and merciful that he does not oppress us. No wonder people everywhere fear him. People who are truly wise show him reverence. And that's the end of 37. I hope you guys have a blessed weekend. Keep reading, whether it's with me or on your own. Spend time with God. It's the most incredible gift that we are given. And it's free. Freely it's given.
Thank you, God. May be blessed and stay encouraged in his word. And when you find yourself just down, just keep your faith and hope. Wait for that turnaround. Wait for that turning point. It will come. It will come. He will answer your prayers. He will take care of you. Do not be discouraged. And I hope you have a great day. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace.